Airport Trade Center is a place I've come for a very, very long time throughout my life. And here in Honolulu, Hawaii, once more, I'm one of these multi-state people. Honolulu, California, Hawaii, California, Nevada, Utah, Arizona, American Southwest, as I say, Idaho, the American Southwest. Hawaii has earned its place on the map. It's high on the map, as I say, Hawaii is so high on the map. So we're taking it so very high, especially here in Honolulu with the condos and these folks. You see the Southwest Airlines, it was a Kona wind day about two days ago, the other day, and you see the planes coming in like that with the blue, the blue 737s, and it says right on it, Southwest. We have earned in Hawaii our place on the map, the American Southwest, and you see these beautiful Hawaiian Airlines flight attendants, you know, they're getting a little costly, Hawaiian Airlines, it's a very, very, it's sort of like the Aero Mexico of Mexico, then you've got Volaris, Southwest is Volaris, Southwest is Volaris, and in Mexico, so Hawaiian is Hawaii's Aero Mexico, uh, you know, a little more costly, but you see, you know, Nicole Lee, as I say, that's my you know, my dream girl from elementary. She's a flight attendant, Hawaiian Airlines. I, I, by the way, I was in that very Starbucks over there. Uh, you know, to be able to have a Starbucks from time to time, as broke as you are, you you, you step into this world where you are uh, not touched by the incredible horror of work, working class. But that's what I want to talk about, and that's where I met her. She was uh, studying to be a flight attendant. She had just passed her ratings. This was about seven years ago maybe so very long ago it's a girl from elementary and she had a child i believe and these people just they break away break away break away at a certain point you can't let them do this you have to elevate the level and just sit kind of boom pounce on them i hop over there there's an international right across the street i want to talk about here in las vegas here in las vegas right now we're talking about fortune is home in las vegas and people that are defining the landscape all around we deserve the number, hashtag we deserve the number. We looked at the LBR stats. We pulled up that website, We're looking at that number over 450. This is median sales, medium sales, single family home condo, just like Honolulu, where in a dream, in a shoal of time, briefly we are in a, uh, in a boundless, meets and boundless vacation, meets and bounds, boundless vacation here at Matthew Ursua, that we understand this. So we're looking at this. Slightly down, uh, the number of right, uh, but it's still hot to the extent that we are. You know, it's always to the extent that for that that it's, it's at that number. And I have to say, we deserve the number because even you go to LA, you see this development happening there. You come here to Honolulu, and oh, no doubt, even here in Honolulu, there is development, there is building. You know, Trump, a great build. You know, we see all this. He signed he signed off on a lot of great bills. For us. So we see it all going to LA, uh, but you go to Vegas and there's really nowhere you see it uh, for the people there. Like in so Honolulu, you've got condos, high rises going up, Ward Village, Howard Hughes, Howard Hughes putting up a lot. In LA, you've got office, and uh, also uh, you know in the in the metro area, DTLA, you've got office, high rise. You've also got a lot of uh, commercial development along the lines of you know. Uh, and then you have you know some high rise for a condo too going up in those areas, but uh, you know rental communities. But you're going to go into Las Vegas and you see commercial centers a lot like this one that are popping up more and more. New Starbucks, say, and it was about a year, year and a half ago, two years ago. You go up uh, north uh, and you you go up to what we call uh, the area. What is it? Uh, Tule Springs. Around that area, uh, Sky Canyon. You're coming, you're coming right in from, say, Pahrump at the Amargosa Junction, coming the other way in around uh, Mount and you come up across that Starbucks where they have the uh, <coughs> Albertsons there, and it's in a center right across from a, a amazing, amazing Burger King, amazing, amazing facilities that they have there. And these are new things. We're seeing them pop up everywhere, everywhere, everywhere. Amazing restaurants, great places to eat. And this is for the locals. This isn't, I mean, again, I've talked before about the esoteric core of Vegas and how, you know, being And this is tourist trap, sort of a, a point of local pride to say, if you're a working class local in Vegas, a point of local pride to say that uh, we don't touch this strip. We try not to drive down there. But the thing with COVID-19, just like here in Honolulu, a kind of cultural exchange, that for 10 years, 20 years, we were, we were seeing these companies where we got people like, this is what a maid looks like, right? So staycation, people that are office workers on Bishop Street, uh, downtown Honolulu, uh, people that are, you know, in hospitality, it's another uh, 
just like Las Vegas and Honolulu. And Hawaii as a whole, but Honolulu specifically because it is metropolitan. You've got Waikiki. Hospitality-based industry. People earn their money by helping tourists that are coming in. It's a really the same thing. It's based on tourism, hospitality, tourism, hospitality. Tourism drives the economy very much here in Hawaii and in Las Vegas, uh, Southern Nevada uh, specifically, uh, uh, almost just as much, if not equally. So this is what's driving the economy. And staycation is a big deal because, oh, no, we don't want people breaking away from Sheraton, breaking away from Marriott, breaking away from Hyatt, breaking away from Hilton. Uh, we want these people to continue to work for us, continue to be a maid. That's what a maid looks like. And uh, all right, let's get, get rid of this. And this is what a maid looks like. We want people to continue, continue to be a maid, continue to work for us. We'll give them staycations. They sometimes can be on the receiving end of the pampering and make it a little easier for them with the, with the paychecks, whatever it is, to, to sometimes go and do that. Especially as air travel got cheaper in the last three to five years, even pre-COVID. That, that really shook things up there. Uh, 19, COVID-19 really shook things up. Now we can go and use this at other resorts. And, and so it was a good thing. But uh, the reason I bring this up, there's an IHOP over there. And I was meant to have gone to Punahou. You see what I'm saying? What a liberal thing to say. He's fucking Obama. You know, he wanted to go to Punahou to smoke, smoke pakalolo, as they say here in Hawaii. You know, well, here's the weird thing. By the way, Nevada, 100% recreational. Pakalolo, you can I mean, this is Pakalolo, this is cigarette, this is Pakalolo, right? Smoke the joint. You know, Pakalolo, it's, you know, we can do it. It's not even here in Honolulu, it is here in Hawaii, the, the law, you know, it's, it's medicinal. You go to sub, they've got dispensary. Right around the corner, there's a dispensary we, uh, here in the airport area where we are. But uh, Las Vegas and Nevada, it's a recreational, 100% legal. So that's the truth at the end of the day, <laughs> if you like it. But, uh, the reason is because people would tell me, I, I used to know a lot of people that were Punahou alumni, and maybe it's not Punahou, maybe it's Ilani, right? Maybe it's, truth be told, I was wrong about it. And what I'm justifying here is the development for the locals here in Las Vegas. What I'm justifying is more of these IHOPs, more of these amazing restaurants, especially in Summerlin, you know, like whether it's a Texas barbecue type of thing. What I'm justifying is us deserving that number, property value being and staying higher because of that development, because of the value being added, because of what it does for the youth. The youth now have a place where they can go and be adults at a younger age, at the age of 14, 15, and 16. What I witnessed yesterday were these beautiful young ladies, high school age, maybe they went to Radford, Moanalua High School, not far from this airport area, hosting people, entertaining people, the waitress, was their same age, you know, 16, 17, maybe 18 years old, just, just out of high school. They, they were so young, beautiful young ladies. I went in there to get up and I, I, I had to take out you know, breakfast burrito to wrap up some work right here at this table last night. And, and uh, to have to walk out those doors and see these very young people doing what I should have been doing at that age. You know, at this point, I think you have to start stealing from the, the, the next generation because people, we are alive. One of the saddest things to have to see is older people start to say, especially in the year 2000, I'm a, I'm a Republican, I believe in, but at the same time, we should never have to say that I have to give it to another generation. We should all be geniuses. We should all speak five languages, 10 languages. We should all do engineering, be engineers, right? This is not a pay show back there. Look at pay show over there. We don't like pay show. We don't like pay show. We should all be these things 100%. Because to have to give your grandson or granddaughter something that you couldn't have. No, no, no. We are now living in a world where, I mean, I was you thought I was crazy. Paraplegic, quadriplegic, they're, they're going to walk again in our lifetimes. And Christopher Reeve never got to see that, or did he? Superman himself. So we pulled up that Nuveen commercial. Nuveen Investments commercial. What a dream. IHOP. That's why I wanted to go to Puno when I was at Radford. That's why I fought to make Radford High School Puno. I wrote Rise of the Student Council. I was incredible, incredibly, you know, I'm a big name there. I met some folks from Radford High School not long ago down there at Salt Lake taking a walk up uh, the bike path in Ayala. And uh, they were down there at a McDonald's down Salt Lake Boulevard. And to say her name was Zamore, uh, just a few days shy of her 16th birthday and another 16-year-old there. And we sort of chatted about the legends of Radford High School and 
couldn't believe it. I'm one of them. They knew my name. They knew my name and they knew it bigly. Like, Matthew or Sue, we know who this is. And they Googled me and they said, this is the guy. We always still know Matthew or Sue. And I walked through Radford High School the other day, actually. Uh, my old, I'm, the, I'm an alumni of Radford High School. And you see what has changed about teenage life, what has changed. And uh, there was a, a set of uh, flyers that they put up or uh, posters, let's say, on 8 and by 11 paper. Prom king, prom queen. And you just see these, these people are hooking up that way. And you see, uh, you know, student council, you see a black business, black, I don't like that, black business, black, you know, they're, they're, they're pushing that issue there to the business club. I was a big business guy at a Radford, everything I know about entrepreneurship, everything I know about marketing, that's Radford High School, actually, that's not UH Scheidler in it, as I say, it's Radford High School, it's junior achievement. And there's nothing I want more, by the way, for all of you, I have to say, than to be in the classroom at Pahrump Valley High School or at a middle school or an elementary school in Pahrump, especially the, the rural areas. There's nothing I want more than to be in Clark County in the uh, jurisdiction of Las Vegas Metro Police Department, where we have, right, let's say, or, or Boulder City or North Las Vegas Police, that, that area, and to be there in, in elementary schools and middle schools there, Chaparral High School, right, let's say. Uh, doing junior achievement, realtor in the classroom. This is what I'm called to do. We didn't teach them financial. We have to teach financial. We have to get up there in front of a whiteboard and talk about financial, talk about goal, set goal, mission and vision, big mission and vision. We run your life that way. But that's why places like I the more of these, the more of these that begin to spring up, the more you're gonna create situations where young men and young women can host. Uh, just like I saw that other day where, you know, you've got your waitress there that's your friend from school too, and where you can start to pick up your mental processing speed, develop socially and sexually, socially and sexually as teenagers, and start to have some dominion over the world around you. This is why I'm a homeless Howard Hughes, you see, and why I'm interacting with the homeless. So you have these, so we're going to wrap it up here, you have these river embankments, you know, Kalihi Stream, down in where the, the Kalihi Transit Center is. Us homeless people, we create encampments. You see what I'm saying? We live along the banks of these rivers and, and we even have boats. You know, I, I was chatting with a lot of these folks and trying to find a way to revolutionize this homeless society to give at least the children or the adults, because I don't want to give it to the next generation. In the next five to 10 years, let's set a timeline, not for the kids, but for us, to own houses in Hawaii, $1,050,000. Yeah, it can't be impossible. There has to be to have a complete title. Because this is the issue with the homeless. Is we have a, our own sort of Mississippi River or, you know, along the Kalihi Stream or along these little rivers that flow under these uh, freeway interchanges, the old Ahupua'a system, and it comes down and it goes past Kalihi Transit Center. And there's some places where it's not private property. These are actually, you know, private property. But at a certain point, it becomes city and county its own city and county, like the Kalihi Transit Center, that city and county, and that, that, that part of that particular stream is so that you can just you know, set up uh, along the banks of that river. There's nothing the sheriffs can do, nothing Honolulu police can do about your tents there. And it is an eyesore, so, but I, I look at the, you know, what this homeless person is doing is setting up a, a place to do, you know, there's something called in uh, Jungian uh, psychology, it's, it's Jungian sandbox therapy. When a homeless person sets up his or her shit circle, and starts crapping on everything and there's all this ash covered, soot covered, five gallon jugs of water, cigarette ash everywhere, dirty panty and underwear, uh, soot and shit covered jeans, all these, it's like that's homeless and there's a cart. What they're doing, and if you interfere with their Jungian sandbox therapy of what little they have in the world, you destroy a human life actually. Yeah, yeah, this is a full Republican telling you this. So don't interfere with their Jungian sandbox therapy. But things like IHOP, if you don't want to use uh, the Mississippi River and Mark Twain and Charles Dickens, uh, you know, we talked about the dreamscape or of the Thames and uh, great expectations. If you don't want to talk about that, let's talk about the Colorado River, which has been in the news very bigly lately because of the water issues, you know, Lake Mead, Lake Powell, and where it terminates in, of all places, Los Algodones, Mexico. A river runs through it. International complex.
water trees. We forget about the people south there. We have to build a wall. We have to build a wall. We have to keep the wall. And we have to do it because Mark Zuckerberg shouldn't be the only person to have a wall around his wealth and his ideas and, and, and to prevent us from replicating his... Because he knows how to make a website. Yeah, that's all it is. He programmed a website. He knows how to make a website. So he gets to fuck a medical doctor, Priscilla Chan. He gets to dick Priscilla Chan on a regular basis. Is what a what a genius nerd he is. And he doesn't want anyone else replicating that. So he keeps his eye on all of society. That's why we hate Facebook. He keeps his eye on all of society to make sure none of us dick Priscilla Chan that way just because we know how to make a website. You see what I'm saying? That's something that Mark Zuckerberg does. So he builds a wall. American needs so we can all be uh, worth something and we need to keep that wall there. We don't take down the wall. We do build a wall. We keep the wall there. But some of us has, has to do special deal with people down there. And it's a beautiful thing because, you know, these beautiful Mexican ladies, beautiful Hispanic ladies that some of us might have to take. Beautiful. Sofia Vergara might dip their toes, say, if, if for some reason they end up uh, on the road from Mexicali in Algodones into Presa Morelos down there. Dip the toe in there. You know, and that's the same water that I'm wading in up in uh, Lake Mead, let's say. Uh, right. So, there's a beauty to it. And uh, let's say it's Colorado. Yeah, we own property. These people set up a tent. And they have to do it on a smaller scale because of how broke they are. That's why we all need more. But th th these people are yearning to live along the Mississippi River. They're yearning to live in needles. The tri-state area. All right? And uh, that's where they need to be, if not in Hawaii Kai.